How many times in the last week have you, your family, used an art scroll book? Chumash, Siddur, Gemara, Machzer, Tanakh, Medrash, Rashi, Ramban, cookbook, Emuna, Tfila, children's books. How many times? And how many hundreds of thousands of times, maybe millions of times, all over the world have people used our scroll books? I'm very honored to be meeting Rabbi Nossen Sherman, who is the editor-in-chief of Art Scroll Masora Publications. Shalom Aleichem, how are you, Rabbi Sherman? Aleichem Shalom, Baruch Hashem, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm very honored to be speaking to a man who has left an indelible mark on the Jewish world. Art Scroll is, a, is something that's a very well-known name. You can't walk into a, a Torah observant house in the world today without finding Art Scroll products. I've got one right here and I didn't even prepare this. All over every Jewish home you'll find from Sidurim, Chaboshim, Gomorrahs, and so much more. Tell me a little bit about Art Scroll and how did it all begin? Art Scroll began in 1976. In late 1975, a very dear friend of Rebbeir Zlotowitz passed away. A young man, a yeshiva teacher, and he left no children. And Rabbi Zlotowitz was a very imaginative person. He wanted to do something in his memory, not just put up a plaque somewhere or plant trees in Israel. He had this vision. Uh, Purim was just a few months off. And he felt that he would like to do an English translation and commentary on Megillus Esther. And uh, we were friendly. We didn't know each other very well, but we had become friendly over the years. I was a yeshiva principal. And he asked me if I would edit and then if I would do an introduction. His dream was to finish it in time for the Shloshim. And he did. He finished the manuscript in time for the Shloshim, working day and night. And... Um, and, and the book came out, and to our great surprise, to everyone's great surprise, it was a, an unusual bestseller. In the, in the Orthodox world in those days, Torah publications, there was a, there was a writer called Trudy Rosmerin, and she wrote an article about Orthodox Jewish publications, and she said most of them look like they were done on a mimeograph machine in somebody's garage. And this was beautifully typeset, beautiful cover, because Rabbi Zlotowitz had a background in art. That's where the name Art Scroll came from. And within just two months or so, over 20,000 copies were sold, which was unheard of in the Jewish world. Now, originally, our plan was just a one-shot thing. I was a yeshiva principal. I had no intention of leaving the profession. Rabbi Zlotowitz had a business. And he did this as a tribute to his friend, and that was supposed to be the end of it. But people urged us to continue. Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, among others, who was Rabbi Zlotowitz's rabbi, said, it's obviously important. Obviously, it hit a chord. If I can use the, uh, the, the cliche, an idea whose time had come. There was a public that was thirsting for authentic, traditional, Torah literature in English. So we continued, and eventually, within, uh, within half a year, I left my position. He gave up his business, and uh, we were working at this time and a half, or, or double time, for 40 years. The last 40 years, since that time, you've printed over 2,000 publications since that time. That's correct. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And, you know, looking back at that time, is there a particular project or safer or something that sticks out that was a highlight for you? Well, I say my, my personal highlights are the, uh, the two surrounds that I, that I did personally. That's the, uh, the Earth Scroll Sitter and the Stone Edition Chumash. The Sitter has um, probably over a million copies in print over the years, and the Chumash is. Um, Close to a million. Close to a million since then has been translated into French and Spanish. 
And these are the standard Chumash and, uh, and Siddur in the world. What an achievement that you can't walk into a base on Medrash, you can't walk into a synagogue without finding some of the things that you were involved with. That must give you a tremendous sense of pride um, that you were involved in, in such a project. Well, actually, uh, I'm involved with many, many superlative people, writers, editors, graphics people, and I, I, I feel humbled to be part of such a wonderful team. And especially to have worked so many years at Rabbi Zlotowitz, today, as a matter of fact, is his yard site, second yard site. Mm -hmm. A man whose, whose vision and drive and stamina really revolutionized the world. Everything that you said about me before, uh, which was a very kind exaggeration, I appreciate it, but it applied to Rabbi Zlotowitz. He is the one who created Art Scroll and made it what it is. In the early days, did you find any opposition or challenges? Some people were very not used to this idea. You know, if you would take a Jewish sefer, here is just by one example, a Jewish book, all in Hebrew, you wouldn't find any English. And some people maybe in the early days thought that this may detract from people's learning experience, or was that not the case? There were, there, there, there were some, it was a new thing. There are things that were presented in English that had never before been presented in English from the traditional Torah point of view, based on Chazal, based on Gemara, on Midrashim, on the classic Svarim like Rambam, Ramban, etc. And there are people who felt that it's going to make learning too easy, especially when we started doing Gemara. There were a few who felt that it's going to make them, people will stop really delving into the Gemara and working on it. The overwhelming, overwhelming number of Gedali Yisrael in America and in Israel were very, very supportive. As a matter of fact, I would say one of the highlights of my life was when we went, the mayor and I, Mayor Zlatovitz and I went to, uh, went to Israel. We met with Rav Yashiv, Rav Shlomo Zalman Orbach, and Rav Chaim Kanievsky. And all of them were very, very supportive. They urged us to do it. We showed them samples of the Gemara, the first drafts of the Gemara. They were very, very happy about it. In fact, Reb Chaim, Reb Chaim Kanievsky did not want to write a letter because he said, my father-in-law supports it, Rabbi Yashiv. Who am I to write a letter if my father-in-law says to do it? But he said an interesting thing, and he authorized us to quote him. He said, <clears throat> Many, many years ago, 150 years ago, people felt it was necessary to do a German translation of the Gemara to show the public, especially the non-Jewish public, it's not as terrible as they say. And it's even more necessary today. It was needed then, and it's needed today, and he authorized us to quote him. You said you've, you've written over 2,000 publications. How did you decide what to print when? Was there a always like a, a long-term plan or what was what in what how did each initiative begin partly a plan and partly improvisation we began with Megillus Esther so the logical thing to do would be to continue with the other four Megillus so the first things that we did the five Megillus and then we went to Chumash starting with Chumash Bereshis and Rabbi Zlotowitz wrote Bereshis well, he didn't write Bereshis. God wrote Bereshis. <laughs> he wrote he did the, the translation and commentary on Bereshis. I edited and I wrote, in, uh, I wrote overviews, introductory uh, essays, which at that time Bereshis was published in six volumes. Since then, we've done it in two volumes. And we did, did the Haggadah. These are a logical, a logical pro pro progression. Uh, then came Mishnayus. Books of Tanakh, other books of Tanakh. Very interesting thing about, about the Gemara. You know, when you think about it, doing Shas, Talmud Babli, and then Talmud Yerushalmi, it's, it's an enormous undertaking, and we never dreamt that we would be able to do it. It was just too immense for us. Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky, who was the senior of Shishiva in the United States, and a very, very wise man. We consulted him very often when we had questions and needed guidance. We always went to him. And at one point he said, and when will you do Shas? 
And we smiled, you know, we thought he was joking, but he was deadly serious. He said, no. He said, you can do it, and you should do it. And if HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives me the years, I'll write you a letter of approbation. Uh, we started six years after that conversation, and he was no longer alive. But it was very, very hard, very, very hard. But Baruch Hashem, we were able to do it. We were able to, uh, the, to, to arrange for the funding, which was a mammoth, mammoth undertaking. The Shas, Talmud Bavli, cost over $20 million. And the marketplace cannot bring that kind of money back. It costs $20 million in, in terms of the workload of putting it together. Exactly, yes. So, Rabbi Sherman, this publication, this is an Ask School Gemara. Just for my, my listeners to understand, I'm sure the people watching this, many of them are familiar with the Gemara, but for those who are not familiar, you have the English type on one side. Each page of Talmud, which is written in ancient Aramaic, there may be five or six English pages for the translation and elucidation and commentaries. And to do this on the entire Shas, it's a huge, huge project. You say it costs $20 million. Can you give me a little bit more detail? How's that broken down? How many people would be traditionally working on this volume to come into publication? Well, any given volume generally has uh, 20 or more people. You have, you have translators, and they write the notes as well, explanatory notes. Um, somebody would have to really see the page to appreciate what, what all of this involves. They write, then their editors, editors go back to the writers with their questions. And then we have uh, what you might call super editors. You have three Rafashiva caliber people, people who, whose knowledge is immense. And they go over it to make sure that everything is correct. They'll make notes, they'll ask for revisions, and they're always, always available if people have, if the writers or the editors have questions. So it's a, it's a three-tier process involving many, many superior Talmud Chachamim. See, let me explain to you what, what's, what's so difficult about it. You need someone who knows how to learn. You need somebody who can understand the Gemara thoroughly. I'll give you an example of how, what I mean by understanding the Gemara thoroughly. Um, we also have the Shas in Hebrew. The God of Hadar, the greatest Talmudic authority in the past generation was Rav Ashiv, who passed away just a few years ago. He says a shir every night and that's in the Talmud. He used our Hebrew Gemara to consult the notes. He knows everything. But he felt that the notes were so good and so well done. I have nothing to do with that, by the way. I did not work on the Gemara. He felt the, work, the notes were so well done but he reviewed the notes before he said the shir. And how do I know this? First of all, I saw it on his desk, on his learning table when a few times when I came, when the mayor and I came to visit him. But even more than that, you could say that that's just a courtesy. No. When he was, when he started saying the shir on the sech de Bechoros, his grandson called us and asked us to send him the volume. We said the volume wasn't done yet. He said, well, you probably have pages, written pages, send the pages. They haven't been written yet. <laughs> now, obviously, if Rabbi Yashiv asked to have the volume, he planned to use it. You, you need a couple of things. Talent. First of all, you have to know how to learn. You have to be a Talmud Chacham. You can't be just a scholar who knows Aramaic. It's not going to work. You can't do just a literal translation because... Every language has its nuances. If you don't understand the nuances of the Hebrew, you can't translate it. If you, want a, if you want a good example of that, go to Google and get a translation of something. It'll be, it'll be accurate word to word, but it'll be illegible. So you need somebody who knows how to learn. Then you need somebody who knows how to explain. You need somebody with teaching talent in order to convey the material and make it understandable. And then you also need somebody whose English is very good. You need somebody who's with a perfect English. It's a very difficult combination. There are many, many great scholars whose English is not good or who can't explain things. Talk to any editor 
in a in a standard publishing house where they placed I remember I remember re reading an article many many years ago Henry Kissinger brilliant man great statesman he's written several books but he has editors who put his prose into understandable English almost every good writer needs that so you need this combination we need people we need the writers who are talented enough to do it well you need the editors who can polish it well and then you need these outstanding authorities who can check everything for accuracy and who are available for consultation what's interesting as well is you know as i learn your gomorrahs and i learn your your books it's always presented beautifully it's very neat it's very clear and i think that's really the art scroll trademark there are certain criteria that you have to ensure a level of clarity when you when you put a production out a lot of this goes to rabbi zlatowitz's background <clears throat> in uh art scroll come and doing brochures and um, invitations and uh, things like that so he has a background in design and he has training in design plus that he had very very good taste amazingly good taste we have a, a graphics genius who was involved in putting together the page what people call the art scroll look as you just mentioned when you asked the question named shia brander a genius one of the top people in the field he, he could he could work for any great publisher and he'd be on he'd be top of the line so be, because of their background because of the talent of these people they wanted to make sure that the page is beautiful and also there's an element of kiddush hashem as i mentioned uh as i mentioned to trudy rosemarin the average orthodox publication looks like it was run off on a copying machine in somebody's garage we wanted it to be beautiful and that's part of the uh part of the charm and part of the success when people saw that original mcgillis esther it was a beautiful publication physically graphically aside from the contents so people saw the book it looks nice it's attractive you can be proud to hold it and then you read it, and that's the icing on top of the cake. Sure. Well, my Sherman, how does it feel to have effectively changed the world? You know, you can't go on a plane, you can't go on a train, you can't go to a Jewish event without seeing people learning from the art scroll publications. This year we had in January the CM Hashas, hundreds of thousands of Jews around the world because of you, and I know you're being very modest and there were other people involved as well, but because of you, these people now have the ability to learn Torah in a way that they never would have been able to do that before. How does that make you feel? Proud and humble and proud that I'm part of such a magnificent team that was able to put all this together. And um, speaking of the, the last CMHS, they called on me to teach a Mishnah to young children. And that was a very interesting experience. You know, here you have a crowd. It was in MetLife Stadium, 90,000 people in attendance plus another 20,000 people in Barclay Center where it was relayed and uh, and here we have these you have 20 young children standing on the stage you have who, who knows how many other children all over the world and you have to teach the Mishnah on their level and you have 110,000 adults at least who are watching you and you have to and you have to make it interesting for them as well i have it used was, uh, i have used an art scroll uh, as a matter of fact i did I, <laughs> I i got the i got my background from art scroll yes what are the future plans of art scroll and how do you intend to use technology which has obviously changed hugely in the 40 years that you've been working in this field how do you intend on using technology to continue spreading terror through the amazing work that you do for the last 14, 15 years or so, maybe a little bit less. We've been digitizing many of our publications. The Shas is, av is available digitally. You can zero in on one word and you can get the English translation, you get the Hebrew notes, you can get the other tractate where, where this subject is under discussion. You can find what the Rambam says about it just with the, uh, just, just with even a couple of fingers. Everything is available. A touch. We have the Chumash on it. We have the Siddur on it. 
uh, the, the digital sitter, as a matter of fact, on Rosh Chodesh, it will show you Yalavi Yavai. Hmm. The other days, it will not show you Yalavi Yavai. You're not going to have the Shabbos happening there for obvious reasons. <laughs> but we're putting more and more of the uh, of our Swarma being put on constantly. It's a constant effort. It's being uh, more and more things are being do, used constantly. And um, you asked about other projects. Well, we're, we're finishing up Yerushalmi. English is almost finished. We have a couple of months. The last volume will be out. Hebrew is uh, about two thirds of the way through. We're working on Enyakov, which is very popular. Uh, Sefer HaChinuch, the book of the 13, 613 mitzvahs, which we've done in Hebrew to great acclaim. And now it's in, in English, I'm sorry, in English. Now it's being done in Hebrew. Josh is around, any, any number of things. You know, there's, there's so much in Torah. Torah, Torah is infinite. The wisdom of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You know, just, just imagine, just since the time of the since the time of the of the mission two thousand years the greatest minds in the world have been involved in understanding the talmud explaining the talmud discussing jewish law jewish philosophy ge theology you know you're talking about you're talking about amazing minds and this has been their whole life's work well, and we're making it available and there's so much to do some of my viewers watching this they may not be so connected or so observant and they may be interested or motivated listening to this to try and do some more Jewish learning especially at this time it allows them they've got a bit more time on their hands where would you tell them to begin which art school publication should they go on Amazon and buy right now I would say the two the two basic Jewish books are the Siddur and the and the Chumash and the uh, the, the uh, our art school, the art school Chumash, the Stone Chumash, has translation, commentary, and it brings the whole host, the whole panoply of, of commentary down to earth. Written, it's written for the modern reader. It's written for the modern reader. I know, you know, great rabbis read it, but uh, beginners read it and they love it. So uh, you have to start with that. You know, these are the two basic works. Siddur, and Chumash. And, um, and then you could try the Talmud, you could try, uh, we, we have a very interesting book, Sefer, which we, which we did only a couple of years ago, the introduction to the Talmud. It has the history of the Talmud, the history of the of Jewish life in Israel and in Babylonia, biographies of the Talmudic stages, and a whole host of other information. It's a fascinating book. And then we have, uh, we have books on Tehillim. People say Tehillim, the Psalms of David. It, it touches the heartstrings of every Jew, not only Jews. So it, it is, there's no end, you know, get an Oscar catalog, thumb through it, go into a Hebrew bookstore, look at the shelves, talk to the proprietors, Everyone has his own interests. Some people are interested in history. Some people are interested in, in, uh, in, in novels. Some people are interested in Jewish law. Some people are interested in the scriptures. Go into a store, look around, browse. That's really what bookstores are for. Of course, they want to sell you the book, but they have to make it available so you can browse. Sure. How many people around the world are estimated to use Art Scroll? hundreds of thousands for sure some uh some are very serious users for example people who are who are learning the talmud whether whether they're learning dafiomi or they're just learning a particular track tape um these are people who use it very intensively every single day and then there are people who uh who use it in shul on shabbos browsing through the Chumash, while the rabbi is saying the sermon, you know this. <laughs> you, probably, <laughs> you probably see this all the time and wish you didn't. <laughs> oh, how many people use it? There's, there's no way to know, but it, several hundreds of thousands, without a doubt. Rabbi Sherman, this has been an absolute privilege. Do you have, in a sentence, a closing message to the Jews around the world who are going to be watching this? Yeah, we have, we, we have a history. We're not, we're not mushrooms. We, we don't grow from the air and, and from water. We have a history. 
we have an we have a tremendous tradition you know, my country the united states and your country the united kingdom we're based on tradition in, he, in the United States, it's the Constitution, the Founding Fathers, the, the, the values of the country. The United Kingdom, you still have a queen. You have all the, cer the ceremony of Parliament. And these are not things to laugh at. These are important. Can you understand law if you don't know anything about the Magna Carta? We're Jews. We weren't born yesterday. We were here before Christianity, before Islam. You know, we've been around for a long time. And that's that's my message. We've been here for a long time and we have a lot to show for it. Take a look, open a book, become acquainted, talk to your rabbi, talk to your bookseller. There's a lot to learn and you'll enjoy it. Rabbi Nassim Sharma, this has been a privilege. Thank you very, very much. I wish you continued good health and thank you for this opportunity and Walter. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Keep up your good work. Thank you.